Hello everybody and welcome back to the Dragon's Library. First new episode in about a week. I got delayed again, but I did release a small short episode for Tears of the Kingdom. So go check that out if you haven't already. It's like a minute long. There's no reason not to. You know, just go see. Uh, I'll be releasing some more short videos to try and fill in the gap since I'm temporarily moving into this once a week schedule. But um, let's get on to the review. So today we're talking about Skull Island, the new King Kong Netflix animated series. And it's all right. Now, the reason I'm talking about this one instead of Tears of the Kingdom, like why this is getting the full review is, A, Tears of the Kingdom, I would have had to come through so much footage. And I just didn't feel like doing that. Uh, <laughs> gotta be honest. And B, I actually have some interesting things to say about why this is kind of mediocre. When it could have been great, which is unfortunate. So, first up, for those of you who don't know, Skull Island is the name of the island that King Kong is found on, if you haven't watched the original movies. And this is an animated series that is set tentatively, in the sense that there are signs from the movies, but they haven't actually made it clear, from the MonsterVerse movies. For those of you who don't know, Legendary Studios was doing a shared universe MonsterVerse series of movies, and I guess now they're doing interconnected TV show stuff. I'm not sure if this is like one last project that was getting kicked down the pipeline or if they're still making more of the MonsterVerse movies. Their version of the Godzilla remake was just okay, but a lot of their other movies have been good, dumb, fun, and I think it's one of those cinematic universes where it's, yeah, just throw giant monsters at each other in different movies. It can be a very enjoyable experience. This one in particular is the first animated installment, to my understanding, and is set, I think, after the events of Kong, but before Godzilla vs. Kong or Godzilla King of the Monsters. So, with some basic context out of the way, let's get into the series itself. At some point in the 1990s, a group of explorers venture out into the sea to searching for unexplained creatures. One of them saw something a long time ago, and he and his best friend dragged their sons around these fishing expeditions every once in a while. One of the sons, by the name of Charlie, wants to go to college soon. He's kind of done with this exploring. He doesn't want to just do this for the rest of his life. You got his friend Mike and Cap, who is Charlie's father. Now, while they're exploring, they run into a bunch... This girl who, you know, was overboard. They save her. She says she was being hunted by these people. She's talking like she hasn't met people in a while. And somebody breaks onto their boat and tries to kidnap her. As they're fighting her off, they get attacked by a sea monster, which destroys the boat, kills Mike's father and Cap's friend, before proceeding to strand them all on the nearby Skull Island, which is the home of King Kong and a bunch of other giant monsters. Soon afterwards, Cap, Mike's father, finds himself in the company of the people who kidnapped the, the girl, who are trying to bring her back to the U.S. Apparently she was stranded on another nearby island that's still in the radius of all the giant monster shit. So her island had a giant monster dog that she found with a puppy after her father and the pup's father killed each other, and now they're best friends, and it followed her. So you're following the kids with the girl and her monster dog, and Cap, who's trying to figure out why these people with guns were exploring these islands and looking for the girl in particular all while trying to avoid giant monster plants, insects, animals, and birds. Also the sea monster, which enjoys flinging stuff at them every once in a while, because why the hell not? So yeah, I kind of like the premise. The base idea is essentially, we'll get these people with a feral girl from another island with monsters, a giant pet dog, and some basic conflict, track them all on Skull Island with something that won't let them leave. The giant squid tries to destroy anything that'll let them leave the island, like a helicopter which they actually do a smart thing the mo more next morning they try and call in a helicopter to extract them all and the squid like rips it apart and you're just like oh okay yeah they can't get out until they deal with that thing and meanwhile you got kong who seems to be sulking and there aren't as many as the villagers as you might remember from previous stuff which isn't a great sign now we're not gonna go into the spoilers about like what happened since the last expedition you know the state of the island all that what's the deal with the sea monster what's the deal with kong sulking I will say, I did kind of like the brief overview of everyone. Mike has a very understandable reaction. He's actually injured early on during the boat attack and gets sicker and sicker as the expedition goes on, acts as a ticking clock to the rest of the group. Annie, the girl, is very upbeat and ecstatic. She's very wary of other people because she essentially lost her dad at the age of four and was, you know, raised by a bunch of monsters on an island who taught her, hey, yeah, you should probably attack first and ask questions later because most things on the island don't talk back. 
And meanwhile, Charlie is just trying to stay alive so he can get home and get on with his life. Plus, you have the rich doctor and the mercenary she hired to help bring Annie back to the U.S. for spoilery reasons. Like I say, that's kind of a twist midway through the movie and, you know, the details of what happened there, so I'm not going to say anything. So before I move on to what this does wrong, I will talk about the things the show gets right. First up, it has a good core premise. People stuck on island, two different groups, so there's conflict. And also there's the islanders in Kong. Hey, there's also squid stopping us from getting off the island. Cool. Our, we have to deal with the island survive, deal with the squid, and get out of here while not killing each other because of our own personal issues. Cool. Nice base setup. Nice streamlined idea. You have some drama in there. You have some twists. It's a pretty good setup. The animation is also pretty good. It's not always like the highest quality, but it does look really good. I like the action scenes for the most part. Nothing made me go, oh yeah, that's amazing. You know, it's no Demon Slayer, or Attack on Titan, or Across the Spider-Verse, but it is pretty good animation, it does its job, and occasionally it can look pretty good. Now, we have to get into the problem, which is, the character is just kinda... I've never been the person who complains about what a lot of people call, like, the Marvel quick quipping problem, you know, when you have characters that are, like, making jokes constantly. But there's a threshold where it becomes just kind of annoying, and I won't say the show does it all the time. I will say sometimes the characters being exasperated and making dark jokes to each other, like, oh my god, why are we not dead? Makes sense, especially with the kids. Honestly, a lot of the time when the kids were making quips at each other, I was like, that seems way more realistic. But when Charlie's dad and the doctor lady are trying to quip at each other, it just comes across as, like, weird, like, watching a older person try and quote something off the internet, if that makes sense. And I didn't really buy a lot of their, like, jokey stuff. And it kind of felt like it was interrupting serious moments at the time. You can have bathos where you, like, interrupt serious moments with jokes. But there's a time and a place for that kind of thing. And I feel like Skull Island didn't give enough gravitas to a lot of its more serious moments. In addition, for a show called Skull Island with Kong on the box art or the posters or whatever you want to call them, for, you know, the displays on Netflix's website, there was a very distinct lack of Kong. Like, you even see one of the skull crawlers from the Kong movie from Legendary Studios. And there's, like, one scene in one episode with, like, Kong's major enemy from the movie. And apparently they've just, you know, they've just been dealt with. They've been dealt with. It's all fine. It's cool. Whatever. But there are a bunch of other very creative monsters, like the crabs, and the cool lizard things, and the aloe turtle, the sea monster actually looks pretty decent, I like the design. But they don't really do much with Kong, which is weird, because this is like, is his show, you know, it's on Skull Island. Kong is the king, baby. Where is he? He doesn't show up for like two, three episodes, which is fine, you know, he can introduce him slowly. And the kids see him, like, I think episode three. But after that, he's just kind of moping. They don't see you, you don't see him for like another three episodes when Charlie gets separated from the group and ends up at the ruins. And he's just moping. And then you don't really get any more of Kong until the last two episodes. This is only eight episodes long. So Kong is in less, is in about half the episodes of the entire series. That feels weird. And there's only one episode, which is I think the seventh episode, that's really about Kong. It goes into like his backstory. It's called You're Not a King, You're Just a Stupid Animal, which was about Kong and his kind of friendship with one of the local tribes people there and how, you know, they used to work together to kill the skull crawlers and keep people safe. And then she had a tragic demise or whatever. And it's just kind of unfortunate it does put more of an adult twist on the series. They have, you know, a lot of... It's very adult swim, if that makes sense. Like, characters are getting bloodily torn apart and you have, you know, limbs flying everywhere. It has that shock value that uh, things like Invincible have. Nothing on the level of Invincible, but it has that same kind of, oh, I wasn't expecting a random severed arm to pop up and, you know, drop down a pool of blood and guts. Factor. I should have a better name for that. Still, it is... Pretty nice. The visuals are good. It has some group reaction scenes. I really enjoyed the final battle between Kong and the sea monster. I did enjoy the emotional arc. And it does have a 
confusing twist at the end. Like, I hate to say it's bad. It's definitely trying to set up some kind of sequel or spinoff, and I'm not entirely sure I hate it. So, yeah. In conclusion, I would give this a 7 out of 10, maybe a 6 out of 10. I'll give it a 7. It has good enough animation and good enough acting for the most part that I think it deserves 7 out of 10. But for a monster movie, it didn't really have any one scene that made me go, Hell yeah! The monkey is punching the giant squid thing! Let's go! It was just kind of okay. And when you're going for bombastic over the top and it's okay, you kind of screwed up, in my opinion. So, yeah. 7 out of 10. If you are a big fan of the MonsterVerse stuff, go ahead. It's more MonsterVerse. I'm just happy Legendary Studios is keeping this going. I hope this doesn't put them off that. Moving on now to the announcements. Hello, everybody. I know it's been like a little over a week since my last full video. I hope that Tears of the Kingdom Short has, you know, staved you off for a bit. I'm going to be doing some more of those for things I don't have full reviews on. The next one's going to be for the Indiana Jones movie because I don't have a ton to say on that. But, yeah. In addition to that, I will also be doing a, another animated movie review. I'm not going to see Elemental, actually. I'm going to I recently watched this thing called Nimona on Netflix. It was actually way better than I expected it to be. So look forward to a review on that. In addition, The Dragon Prince is about to come out with its next season on July 27th. So look forward to that. Plus, I am working on a review for The Fourth Wing. It's a book by Rebecca Yarrow. So again, more stuff to look forward to. And I am working on getting through the Final Fantasy. In fact, I... This review should likely be coming out on Wednesday, and on Tuesday I restarted the stream of Final Fantasy. I think my thumb has healed enough that I can play for about two hours on Tuesday and Thursday, not to worry about upsetting it. So, hopefully that should be all good. And now we have the end card. Click on the subscribe board, go to my channel and subscribe, check out more stuff from me. There's a video you recommends and a playlist of all the stuff I've done this year. I hope you guys like all that, and I will see you all next time. Bye!